Lesson 21, Jesus Enters Jerusalem. In today's lesson, we learn about the day Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly, purged the temple, and then was met with indignation from the chief priests and elders. We will learn some lessons about how people respond to Jesus with kindness and honor, and some with criticism. We also will learn about how we should not use religion for making money or getting honor from men. Also, Jesus will give us lessons about the power of faith and the sad future of those who are faithless and fruitless. Jesus asked his disciples to go to a nearby village and bring him a young donkey to ride upon. He assured them that if any asked why they were taking the donkey, and they should say the Lord needed it, that he would gladly let them take the donkey. Jesus clearly knew the place and the owner of the donkey, and that he would be very happy to let the Lord use his property. Certainly Jesus deserves every kindness we give to him, and we should be so very willing to lend anything that he would like to use, such as our money, our time, our skills, our home, Christians, should be glad to share whatever they have for the Lord. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey, and this may have been a very humble way for a king to come to his people, but this shows how Israel did not recognize or honor him, and this humble presentation of the king was foretold by the prophet Zechariah 500 years earlier. Though his entrance into the city was humble, Still many were glad to see him and honored him as the long-expected Messiah, shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. In Jerusalem, Jesus went to the temple, and he drove away all those selling and money changers. He cried out that the people had changed his father's house from a place of prayer to a den of thieves. He was eaten up with zeal. He felt so passionately about this abuse of religion that it brought out his righteous anger as he overturned tables and drove away those who were making money from religion. True Christianity is not a business of making money, although so much of what is done in churches today follows this sad and perverse course. God delights in our sincere prayers and our drawing near to him but despises when we offer spiritual services for a charge. This is a great abomination to God. And when you see and hear men using church services to make money, you can be sure that God is angry and will judge this hypocrisy. The children were admiring and honoring Jesus for his righteous actions and seeing in him the one they believed to be their Messiah. The children's praise of Jesus makes the chief priests and scribes indignant, but Jesus defends them by quoting from a psalm of David, which said that God had ordained praise from the mouth of infants. The children knew more by their faith than the priests knew through all their learning. As Jesus left Jerusalem, he wanted to take some fruit from a fig tree, but when he found none, he condemned the tree and immediately it withered. This was a picture of the unfruitfulness of Israel and how they too would also be condemned and their blessings given to other people who would love God. Jesus teaches his disciples that faith was powerful and could even move mountains because if God wills it to be so, then nothing is too difficult for God to accomplish and God answers prayers made in faith. The chief priests and elders come to question Jesus by what authority he was acting, and Jesus knew they were hoping to trap him in his words, so he turned things around on them and asked them to first answer a question concerning John the Baptist. He asked if John's baptism was from men or from God, and they discussed the question among themselves and realized that they were trapped. For if they said it was of man, then the crowds would turn against them, for they all counted John as a prophet. 
But if they said his baptism was from God, then Jesus would tell them, Why did you not submit to him? They could not answer, and so they said they did not know where his baptism was from. And Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Those who try to resist God's wisdom will in the end look very foolish. Jesus goes on to speak in parables to help these proud religious Jews to see the error of their ways. He speaks of two sons, one who at first does not obey his father, but later repents and does what was asked of him. The other son said he would obey, but never did what was asked of him. Jesus told this to the Jews to show them that they were like the son who said he would obey, but never submitted to the will of the Father. Next, Jesus tells us a parable about a landowner who leased out his vineyard, and at harvest time sent servants to collect his share from the harvest. But those who leased the land beat and killed the servants. Then at last he sent his son in hopes that they would respect him and give him his due. But they also conspired against the son and killed him. Then Jesus plainly tells the Jews that they refused the kingdom of God while other sinners and harlots were entering into God's kingdom. The parable was given to bring them under conviction of their own treachery against God. They were so proud and thought that their spiritual authority over Israel could not be questioned, and those who did would be persecuted or killed. They would not recognize any authority greater than their own even when God sent messengers like John and Jesus to their nation. They rejected John, and now they were also rejecting God's Son, and wanted to have him killed, so that they could keep their position of honor before men. It is this religious pride that will cause many to lose out on God's blessing and salvation, and they will be cast out from God's kingdom. Be sure you are not lifted up in pride and think you are so wise that no one else can teach you, lest you also be in danger of rejecting God's salvation through Christ or condemn those who are God's children. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Matthew chapter 21, verse 42.